stitch goes there and cut off the thread and we're done. Hello. I'm just finishing making a little pair of trousers for Buzz Lightyear here. I thought you could do with a new look for a new term. Turns out he wasn't lost after all. He was just on holiday, but now he's back. Now for the last couple of months, Buzz had been, has been reminding us, hasn't he, of how the message of Jesus went to Jerusalem and beyond. Like it says in our memory verse, but the Holy Spirit will come to you. Then you will receive power. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in all of Samaria and in every part of the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Well, sewing clothes for Buzz reminds me about a follower of Jesus who we find in Acts chapter 9. Her story forms part of the big story about Peter and the other apostles and how God showed that their message about Jesus was true. Before we get into that though, I've got a question for you. Has anyone ever made you a present? Or have you ever made a present for someone else? My mum made me long tail here and I still treasure him all these years later. What is it that you think that's nice about gifts that are made especially for us? Pause the video and have a talk about it with your family now. Well, I hope you had a nice chat. I think that the kindness that's shown in making a present, it can remind us of God's kindness. In Acts chapter 9, we'll find several followers of Jesus and the things that they say and do tell us a lot about God's kindness and about his power too. Emma is going to tell us that next part of the story of the, the good news of Jesus going out to every part of the world. Today we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 9 verses 32 to 43. As Emma tells that story, see if you can spot what did God help Peter to do to help two different followers of Jesus? And then what effect did it all have on the people living nearby? Grace, Nathan and I are going to tell you a story, a story from the Bible. It's a story that can be found in Acts chapter 9, verses 32 to 43. It's the story of how Peter prayed to Jesus to heal two different people, and Jesus answered his prayers. Peter was travelling around the country, and he went to visit a place called <laughs> Lydda. When Peter arrived in Lydda, he found a man named Aeneas. Aeneas was paralysed, he couldn't move. He'd been stuck in bed for eight whole years. Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and tidy up your mat. Can you get up? <gasps> Yay! Mat. Immediately, Aeneas got up. Everyone who lived in Lydda and Sharon nearby saw him walking around and they turned to the Lord. They believed that Jesus is the Son of God. In Joppa, a place near to Lydda, where Peter was. There was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, Tabitha is pronounced Dorcas, so sometimes we call her Tabitha and sometimes Dorcas. It's the same name, just in two different languages. Tabitha was always doing good and helping the poor. She made lots of lovely clothes for anyone who needed them. When the disciples heard that Peter was nearby in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him to come to Tabitha. Please come at once, they said. Peter went with them and when he arrived he was taken upstairs to the room. Lots of widows, people who Dorcas had helped, crowded around Peter, crying and showing him the lovely clothes Dorcas had made for them while she was still with them. Oh, man. Peter sent them all out of the room and then he got down on his knees and prayed. Oh, man. Turning towards Tabitha, 
he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and sat up. Sit up. Peter took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called the believers and the widows and presented her to them. This miracle was talked about all over Joppa. People were chatterboxing about Jesus. Many people turned to the Lord Jesus when they heard about the story of Tabitha. Peter stayed in Joppa for quite some time after that. He stayed with a man called Simon, a tanner. Thank you for listening to our story. Thanks very much, Emma. Well, did you spot the answer to the questions? The questions were, what did God help Peter to do to help two different followers of Jesus? And then what effect did it have on the people living nearby? So first of all, what did God help Peter to do? Well, he helped him to heal Aeneas, didn't he? He hadn't been able to walk for eight years. But then Peter told him, Jesus healed you. And he got up. It was a miracle. And God helped Peter to do something even more amazing for Dorcas. Dorcas had died and all her friends were very sad. But after Peter prayed, Dorcas got up. She was alive. And then did you notice uh, in the answer to the second question how these miracles help the people who live nearby to believe in Jesus' message? Because the people in Lydda, they didn't know Peter very well yet, but they knew Aeneas. They'd probably seen him being carried around on a, a stretcher for eight years. And the people in Joppa, they didn't know about Peter and who he was but they knew about Dorcas and all her kindness and all her sewing. And so when they saw that God was at work in such an amazing way, through her, through Peter, well, they knew that they could trust what Peter said and they believed the good news about Jesus. I wonder if you've ever seen anything amazing. I once saw my teacher do an experiment that sent flames shooting up to the ceiling. It made me think that that teacher knew a lot about science and about fun experiments. I also once saw an amazing double rainbow over the city of Manchester from high up in a tower block. And it reminded me that God is big and kind and trustworthy. Pause video and have a chat with each other now. Think of something amazing that you've seen. It could be an amazing person or an amazing thing in nature or, or something someone's done or made. What did that amazing thing make you think about the person who did it or made it? When we see something amazing, it makes us think, doesn't it? The amazing things that God did through Peter made people think carefully about his message and many came to believe in Jesus for themselves. Now, for our craft today, we're going to make anything. That's right, anything you like. But it's got to be made for somebody else. A bit like Dorcas, I thought that we could all make something to give away. So you could sew something like she did, or if you like sewing, or you could draw a picture, or you could uh, make someone a cake, you could make someone a cup of tea, or make up a song or a poem for them. God's made us all different, hasn't he? And we're all good at different things. So have a think and then make something for someone else. There are also some uh, sheets to colour in and, and fill in, and you can find the link for those below and uh, on the church website too. We've heard some amazing things that God did and we can also sing about the amazing things that God has done. Follow the link in the description or the one that will appear uh, up there and, uh, and then go and join in with the song If God Made the Sun by Dumb Rocks. It's all about trusting God because of his amazing acts. When you've had a sing, come back here and we'll finish the video together. God is great and we can trust in him. Well, in a moment, it's going to be time to go and have a closer look at this Bible story as a family uh, using the questions that will appear on the screen. 
But first of all, we're going to pray. Incidentally, grown-ups, uh, if you find that praying as a family can get a bit awkward and perhaps it's a bit difficult to know whose turn it is and what to do next, well, why not have uh, an object that you can pass around to show whose turn it is? It could be a toy, like Buzz, or uh, you could pass a, a Bible, or you could sort of make a, a little prayer pebble to pass around to know whose who's turn it is next. And that will give you just something that will help you to focus on talking to God without worrying about whose turn it is to speak. But for now, it's my turn. Uh, and so you might like to close your eyes and put your hands together and let's talk to God. Father God, Thank you so much for helping Aeneas and Dorcas and showing everyone that Peter's message was important and true. Thank you for all the amazing things that you've done for us. Thank you for the amazing things that we can see in the world. Thank you especially for Jesus and how he died on the cross to save us. Please help us to remember these things and to put our trust in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you have a good week and that you can join us again next time. God bless. Bye.